So appreciation, asking the other person, figuring out what they want. Don't guess. Don't just give the gift that you would want to receive. Be conscious yourself of what it is that you want. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Relationship Theory. Today we're going to be answering one very simple question. How do you make your partner feel appreciated? Baby, how do you make me feel appreciated? I'll do more. You tell me. Um, all I right. hope you have a strategy and I that think. this isn't just happening by accident. I'm supposed to tell you. It's I can like tell I you know. how I'd like to be appreciated. Um, well, I mean, look, first of all, and we didn't start here. So this was, I think, in our evolution of being together for 20 years. Ask the other person. Been married almost 20 years. There We've been go. together 21. There it is. <laughs> Says the man that literally a week ago was like, babe, we're about to celebrate our 19 years, aren't we? I'm like, no, it's 20. Did I say that or did I say... You did. Is it 19 or 20? I admittedly was like trying to run the math in my head. I thought it was just faster to ask. <laughs> um, all right, so I got totally derailed. How do you make somebody feel appreciated? Okay. So yeah, number one is ask the person. Like, I know it seems so simple. Keys to the kingdom. I, I tried to guess. You tried to guess what I wanted. You, I tried to guess what you wanted. And it's like, I mean, the thing we even had the discussion about, like, I want you to send me flowers. I want you to send me love notes. I want you to text me lovely, sweet messages um, that wouldn't work for you. That wouldn't necessarily be your language of appreciation. So instead of me guessing and then getting Never it wrong. Never send me flowers. Yeah, should I should be don't. very clear about that. Um, don't guess. Literally ask. And here's the other point, though. I've noticed, because we just had our family here, that me and you act in other ways that normal people don't. And I didn't realize it's actually sometimes hard for people to actually say what they want. Mm. Like, what is their language of appreciation? It's like, oh, you know, whatever. Like, you get that so often. So that's actually interesting to bring into this discussion where what if someone isn't necessarily giving you a straightforward answer? Because for me and you, it really was, well, how do you feel appreciated? And I was like, I need your time. You can get me all the wonderful gifts in the world. Like, I can't get more time with you. That to me, like I've got one life, it's freaking finite, I want time with you. So, and then it's acts of service. But it's not acts of service when anyone else, it's acts of service with you. Now if you were just on the outside trying to guess, you would see me not wanting necessarily to other people to do things for me. You'd be like, oh, well that definitely isn't her language. Mm. Um, and then on the other side is you're giving me the gift you think I want, but sometimes you give the gift that you really want yourself. I, that, that I think is more potent than people realize. It is so difficult to not give people the gift that you want because you feel it inside. Mm -hmm. So mine is words of affirmation. That's so potent for me and gives me such a big emotional response that it's, it's weird for me to think, oh, some people like for them, it's, that's absolutely meaningless and they want gifts, for instance. So somebody that I know and love very much their love language is gifts. And that's so foreign to me that I remember the first time that they actually said it out loud. And I was like, whoa, that was very surprising to me because it's just not how I experienced the world. Mm -hmm. And so now you have to translate. Now you have to go, okay, this wouldn't mean anything to me, but it really means something to them. It's like giving Tupperware to somebody at Christmas. I'm like, what is happening? Oh, my mother-in-law. If somebody gave me Tupperware for Christmas, I would be aghast. I would be like, save your money. You don't need to get me anything. That's absolutely fine. Come just give me a hug. I'm all for it. But giving me Tupperware is actually offensive. But I would be here's mortified. The, thing. the person that gave it, that's their love language. Yes, like I know. My mother in law, your mom, she always, every Christmas, she can't help herself. And I realize it's actually her love language. She's not necessarily doing it because for her. It's not, giving you Tupperware isn't her love language. It's not like my mom's love language is Tupperware. My mom, kitchen it means, yes, she gets an emotional exactly. response from that kind of gift. Exactly. Right. So sorry, keep going, but yes. No, I mean, that's, <laughs> it, that is exactly the thing I think so many people miss is that it's very hard to do the translation effort of, I would be mortified if somebody gave this to me. And therefore, if I'm completely honest, I don't get the same emotional response giving them that You're gift. Right. Whereas if somebody asks, like my sister likes manga. So I, as soon as I get her Christmas wish list, I go straight for the manga because I feel awesome giving it to yeah, her because yeah, I yeah. love it too. And I'm like, oh my God, you're going to love this. It's going to be amazing. And so... I get you manga and I'm like, I feel so bad, babe. All I've got you is this manga book. Yes. You're, you're like so happy. But even I, even seeing you happy, I'm just like... 
And honestly, getting a gift that somebody loves giving you as much as you love receiving it is awesome. Yeah. And so that the same is true of love languages. Mm. And so understanding your partner's love language, even taking tests, I'm sure they're very easy to find online. We've had our whole company do it, although not in a while. We probably Captivate should. Captivate my girl, Vanessa Van Edwards. Preach. So doing those is surprisingly enlightening about yourself mm -hmm. because you realize like, mm. for instance, you said this earlier, what's interesting is I, I have two love languages with you, mm -hmm. which are um, words of appreciation and touch, but I don't want anybody else touching me. So it is really interesting. I would never have guessed that my second love language is touch. Like it's self-evident to me that I like to be touched by you, but I just never put it in that frame of reference. And so realizing as you're going through these quizzes and answering them, it's like, well, if it's Lisa, I would like this, mm -hmm. but if it's anybody else, I would want this. And so really taking the time to do the self-reflection to figure yourself out so that you can then um, figure out the other person, you can create a more effective theory of mind, and now you guys can really connect and not miss each other. So true. And a big part of it also is to not judge the other person and what their love so language important. is. Because while other people are like, gifts, that's your love language. God, aren't you, um, what's the word? I'm not sure where you're headed. Um, materialistic. Mm. And it's like, well, no. Like if, if for whatever reason, that's the way that they hear and feel appreciated, like if it's someone you love and it's someone you actually want to be happy, you know, mm. want to be happy, there's no right or wrong. There is, they've been open, they've been honest. This is their love language. And if you want to be happy, then you have to take off the judgment and be like, okay, then this is them. You know, same with, um, like it is hard for me to sometimes just keep saying praises mm. or appreciation out loud because I don't want it to seem fake. I feel it, I feel it so much. But I have to remind myself, actually, this is true. I have to remind myself to keep saying it. It doesn't mean I don't think it. It doesn't mean that I don't feel it. But I have to remind myself to keep saying it out loud. And sometimes in the reminding of saying it out loud, I have to remind, okay, this isn't fake. You do feel it, but they just need to hear it. Um, and then having to work through how you do that and then making sure that you're actually delivering on it. Mm. And, you know, and look, we, we are all human, so it doesn't mean that we're always good at showing those love languages to the person that we love all the time, but it's remembering and going back to it. And, um, and then also one more thing to add is, does it change over time? Does your love language change over time? Because actually, as you were just talking, it's interesting, you said about touch, and I was like, God, I think I'd actually way rather you come and hug me than... So the one thing is I'd said... Access oh, finish that sentence. As I your know. husband, I want to know. Sorry, because you said, I, I would, I'd always said act of service, but only from you. And so what you do is you heard me. And babe, I felt so heard. You went and put the kettle on every single morning since. And you do that without fail. Every single morning, no matter how busy you are, no matter how much or how little you've slept, every single morning you, you fill up the kettle and you boil it for me. And it's that little thing that meant so much to me but as you were just talking and you said touch, I was like, oh, if I had to choose between you putting the kettle on or you giving me a hug every morning, I'll take the hug. I mean, here's the good news. You don't have to choose. What's interesting, though, mm -hmm. is that we kiss every morning, but we don't hug because it's, we're often in different positions. One of us is standing, one of us is sitting because we get up at different times. Would that, like, be meaningful Might to you? be. That's really interesting. We should interesting. try it. Like, actually... Just every morning, instead of, yeah, we obviously give each other a kiss, but like just give a big hug. Mm. Mm. God bless the show. I know, it's so true. Okay, we're going to try that. So, appreciation. Asking the other person, figuring out what they want. Don't guess. Don't just give the gift that you would want to receive. Be conscious yourself of what it is that you want. Did you say no judgment? Well, feels, no, I did not. That, that was no judgment. That really nice addition and what may help people also is sometimes it's kind of hard to like give feedback to your partner on how well they're doing but ultimately you want them to do better and you mm. want to do better so what may help is even if um if people are finding it difficult to get it started or to stay you know like consistent 
maybe every like two or three weeks or once a month, like when we sit down and go, how am I doing? Like knowing that you really want to do well, knowing that your partner really wants to do well. If you do a pinky swear that you're both in it, like it should be enjoyable somewhat to sit down and say, have I gotten, like, have I gotten better? Am I getting better? And what can I do differently? Because I always think of this. It's really interesting. You know that for most people that isn't going to be fun. But But when you have a almost gamified mentality of how can I get better, that's more interesting. And I use the the word fun deliberately because I can say it's going to be tough, guys. But every month you should really. So I think of things like this as. Better to lie to them to get them to do it. (laughs) to use language that empowers you so to me that's exactly what i'd say oh it's gonna be so fun me and my babe are gonna sit down we're gonna have this conversation i'm gonna come in with i got my notes like i even change the tone i use when i talk about Mm. this i even change my body language i use my hands more i smile i use the word fun all of that is absolutely freaking deliberate because to me this is like the growth aspect of like i want to be with you forever babe to what i take my freaking dying breath and how are we going to do that if some a lot of the things you have to deal with in relationships are difficult so it's like how do you gamify you even just said right like maybe that's a fun way maybe people can do like all right let's give each other a score from one to five and if i hit a five then i get this i get back tickles or back rubs for 10 minutes and it's like i want you to hit a 10, right? Selfishly. It's interesting. This feels like it should be a good idea, but it strikes me as a Black Mirror episode. What? I know. I'm not sure. I'd really have what? to think about this. I think partly because I would want my feedback in real time rather than make some big, dramatic, like, sit-down thing thinking, over this. Yes, but I'm thinking about... I can absolutely come to you on a day and be like, yeah, this is your feedback. That's bad. I'm trying to be universal on how most people function and how most people don't just do that. And then also most people may feel it as Does an this attack. break down along male-female lines? I don't know that that's be, true. But I, like the attack. thought of you being like, every Saturday we're going to sit down and I'm going to give you a scorecard. It's like, I want to want that. I want to want that because I want to get better. But it really sounds Well, the way you just said that, of course it's going to be horrendous. I just want you the want feedback to in real time. <laughs> right. So that I, I get like, because I do want to get better and I want to deliver what you want for the very reason that you said, I want to be with you forever. And like, this is how you keep a healthy, thriving relationship. And when I think about what we actually do, we give each other feedback in real time and occasionally we fail to, and then we'll have the more dramatic talk. And because those dramatic talks are rarely fun, they're useful, but they are rarely fun that making this like when you said I'm coming with my notes I was like oh dear god <laughs> this sounds like a nightmare all right so here's the funny thing we would talk about this this literally is how we would talk guys so you're like flies on the wall so what I would do babe hearing that you hate that I would go all right you love sushi all right I'm gonna make this whole event it's gonna be fun because I don't want it to be a dredge I don't want it to be like oh god sushi and- with a side of blind side <laughs> like let me hit you with what I've been thinking about for the last month. You've sucked on these three dimensions. That's amazing. The funny thing is this is so important to get the information, but doing it in a formal way, it clicks a thing in my brain over into work. And like, cause these are all ideas where I'm like, wow, that actually be really good for the company. But I wouldn't want to run my personal life in this way. You have to get the information. This is so true. And yeah. I want to make sure people hear that we put so much time and energy into this. But the idea of turning it into this formalized process I, yeah, really mortifies me. The funny, it doesn't me in the sense of... Which is I, very interesting. I think of the, 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 the pitfalls that we've either fallen into or that other people may fall into. And we've been in business together for so long, babe, that I can come to you and say that in real time. And we work it out and we move on. I don't think many couples are like that. And I'm trying to really, in 2022, this is my new thing is like, think about like the bigger group or the people that find the difficulties and where are those traps? And I think in what we're talking about with um, the feedback and we're talking about your love language and am I doing a good job and things like that. What I worry about is that people set and forget. And in the set and forgetting, so let me just finish, but in the set and forgetting, you become the three years down the line, you're like, we had a great relationship and I don't know what happened. That is my biggest fucking fear, that you start well, you have every great intention, but you don't have a way to keep communicating and making sure. So I'm just saying, assume people, 
If people, <laughs> bless you. Thank you. If people are like you, amazing, great. Now everyone has the rule. They can just literally give each other in, f in real time and no one gets their um, feathers rattled and we're all good to go. I'm though trying to think of the other side of that people may not find it easy to get the feedback, to sit down. So if it's not easy, how do you overcome it? So I go to gamification, make it fun. What do I know? I know that you love back tickles, back massages, however you want to phrase it, but you love me tickling your back. I literally would go, oh babe, I'm gonna give you a rating and what I'm gonna do is from one to five and if you're at five, I'm gonna give you 15 oh God, minutes back. Okay, so obviously, but I would talk through it with you. And obviously you're saying it's your I nightmare. I would shut it down so aggressively. Okay, so then I would say, okay, what else? What is exciting to you? How do we do this? Communication, that's the point I'm so trying to So you and I, I to. feel like we've actually already cracked this nut. And I'm so curious to see if you see this in the same way. We've talked about this before. What I do and what you and I have talked about many, many times before is when you have feedback like that, one, you wanna give it as soon as you can, and two, you wanna look for a moment where the person is receptive. And so I don't just say things right at that very second because there might be tension in that moment, and now if I'm giving you negative feedback in a moment where it's already one of us is, has our feathers rattled, to use your new phrase. Uh, <laughs> I, I let it, it go. I, I was like, uh, rattle feathers, I, we huh? We need like a little Lisa dictionary of all the like phrases like blend together. I like it, I like sense. rattling feathers. Not an easy <laughs> task, I might add. The feathers are not known for how much they rattle, but uh, when one of us has our feathers rattled, to hit them with critical feedback at that moment is probably not the right idea. But yes. this whole idea that we have about giving the keys to the kingdom, so I want you to win. Mm. So one, I'm not coming at you with negative feedback to sting you with something. Mm. I am coming with it to help you. This is gonna sound funny, I don't have a better way to say this and, and I'm saying it to my wife who knows what I mean, but to better manage me and to help facilitate you know, ease of communication and connection and appreciation to keep this on theme. So. I'm looking for that right moment where we feel really connected. I can tell that you're open and receptive. And then I will say, hey, you know, something that would be amazing is if you did more of this, less of that, whatever. And when you, one, again, you have to keep these timelines short. It should be measured in days, not weeks, and certainly not months. But when you look for that moment where it's like, okay, I can say this now and they'll actually be able to hear what I'm saying and that I'm saying it with love and that I'm being protective of the relationship, it really works like really well. The idea of doing it formally and like it, I'm coming in like, you know, sort of ready for a fight and it feels like I was trying to make work. it fun so it wouldn't feel like a fight. No, it's totally get that. I understand your intentions. But when I think about the fact we don't do it like that, and I think there's a reason we don't do it like that, and so then I started asking myself, what do I do? And then I was like, oh yeah, we've talked about this a thousand times. All right, so here I'm gonna throw a wrench in your idea, yeah. and I'd love to hear your uh, how will you solve it. So, totally agree. Assume, so couples that are like us, they're good to go. They yep. can do it in real time. Hopefully we're given information. Yeah. What if you're not someone that can do it in real time, their sensitivity, you even said like, hey, no, 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 you actually just have to find the right moment. Now what if there's a stress in the relationship and that moment you, you keep waiting? At what point do you go, oh, we've gone too long and I can't wait anymore. So now what do you do? Because that's my fear. That is exactly what I'm trying to get to is that there's just a check-in moment. And so you if ready? you don't have I had yes, an idea come to mind. It is maybe just my version of exactly what you're trying to do and so I'm just putting whatever my own spin. So you've, you're, you've got the right idea to gamify it or maybe I'll say it slightly differently just to make sure that it's fun. Yeah. So I thought, okay, what if you had a, a fishbowl and little strips of paper next to the fishbowl and each of you, every time something, you bump against something during the week and so you write a the thing on it like um i wish you boiled my kettle every morning or let's say this would be easier if we both drank tea or coffee whatever uh i wish that you filled the water back up when you poured it for your own coffee so that when i woke up because i almost always wake up before you so that when i woke up there was water for me as well mm. 
Word, I totally get, and that would make me feel appreciated. And then on the other side of it, you write like the, the fun thing that the reward for doing that or even for taking Aww. on the information, right? Aww. Like for picking it out of the bowl. Yeah, like uh, mm, you get a kiss, you nice. get two minutes back tickle, I'm gonna, uh, if we get, the next time we get takeout, I'm gonna put it away for you in the fridge, whatever. Like just fun little things mm. in the other person's love language mm. that you're gonna do. And so now on the weekend, it's like one, I can see that there are things in the fishbowl. So it's like, oh, interesting, there's something that the person's bumped against, or, and this would make it even more fun, this is actually getting kind of interesting, if I know that there's also good things in the bowl. Ah, so it's like the bowl say, isn't way, like, oh God. That's what I was like, the bowl becomes anxiety. Right. I, I like walk in. This is got, why the I've meeting three, I can feel I you got, setting up for us with notes. I was like, Jesus. It's like, I'm fearing the weekends now. And I see like three of my notes. And I was like, I was like, the anxiety would be. Right. So I actually like your idea of the, the, the plus. Like, I actually like the idea of just by, because you pulled it out, this mm. is what you get. That's actually really nice because you know that even though it's going to sting, there's something good on the other side. Right. And also the good actually is telling the partner. So imagine you pulled it out, right? And you read like, oh, okay, fill the, bo fill the kettle up. It feels like, oh God, here, you know, she's telling me what to do, whatever. Right. And you turn it around and it like, maybe you could even write like a nice word about them. Like, I appreciate you. And because of that, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. So it comes in so that you're getting the feedback of, hey, here's an improvement, but here's also something positive that you can take right. out of that. That's really interesting. So big ups, as you say. The funny thing is so much of your British saying is like locked in like the late 90s. I wonder if anybody in England even says that anymore, but. Um, it's big up. Big up. Like big up Sing to, Singular. Yeah. So to big up somebody. Oh, uh, yeah. And, but then also, some of them are gonna be things that they could do better. That's actually really interesting. See, and guys, this is literally how we come to our results. Like, it's like, oh, well, I had this idea. You think it's ridiculous. You say your idea. I'm like, I hate that idea. And then yeah, we I just go. Yeah, I think being honest about what you think. Is, how it would affect you. Yeah, like I could have just been like, hmm, yeah, Saturday notes, that's great, yeah. I can't wait. And I could have just been like, uh-huh, your fishbowl idea of all the shit that you're doing right. wrong. Mm, can't wait. So true. Boom. Preach. There it is. That's actually a good tactic. I like that. We'll have to start using our fishbowl idea. We should do a game. I like the sound of that, Bill. You yeah, make baby. it fun. Relationship theory game. There it is. Coming soon. And book of questions. Truly coming book soon. That I think would be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. All right, everybody. There it is. Now you know. And if you implement things like that with your own partner, then you can really make them feel the appreciation, which goes a long way, a lot farther than you probably think. And speaking of things that go farther than you think, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And until next time, my friends, Go and build a beautiful relationship. Take care. Peace.